This is part two of the Orca FPV goggles breaking themselves incident analysis. We have the official statement of the Orca that explains exactly what happened, or at least explains it from their point of view. But if you ask me, I think there is slightly more into this issue. You want to know why? Let's go through the public statement of Orca and then let's talk about, well, what's still missing? What are your thoughts on the topic? Drop them in the comments. Let's have a nice discussion on why and how this code actually got leaked, because it was not really leaked, into the Orca bootloader. That's the Orca statement and from the statement we can learn that the perpetrator was perfidious. Also we learned that he wrote a code bomb that detonated. He never wanted to raise any suspicion that the ransomware was programmed to explode and it was timed to activate on the spring Saturday to bring even more havoc. And also the sentence that says that this has to be one of the most stupid cyber crimes ever committed in the history of cyber crime. Also that the perpetrator had a very simplistic worldview when you plan a ransomware attack to be called a license even though it was clearly a ransomware time bomb that was designed to cause as much havoc as possible. And finally that the Orca did everything great as the company, they worked very hard with their engineering department to solve the issue and also worked very hard with the legal department to prepare the prosecution of the crime. Now, that makes sense. Right? Only that, not really, and it shows only one perspective on this whole problem. Thing number one is that I have a gut feeling that the Orca is not in the possession of the source code of the Orca goggles bootloader. This is a gut feeling, but the gut feeling has some, well, evidence, because apparently the MD5 checksum of the file released by the Orca and the file released by the guy who wrote the bootloader is exactly the same file, because the MD5 is also the same. Next, looks like the routine that stopped booting of the goggles was in the bootloader for years, since the very beginning of the Orca goggles itself. But if it's really true that the contractor was giving Orca only the compiled version of the bootloader, the question if this is really a ransomware or the license is a valid question. I did some software development contractors work. I was hiring contractors to do stuff for me. I was managing nearshore and offshore projects as well. This is why I know from the experience that requesting the contractor to pass the source code, well, this is not happening only if you are not really buying a source code, but you are buying only the ready binary and the right to the source code stays with the contractor. Because a normal practice is when you contract any kind of the software development to an external contractor, you want A, a rock solid agreement that clearly states that this is not licensed anything and you and actually the contractor is passing his rights to the code to you or there is really something strange going on down there. Because if we don't know what the agreement between Orca and the contractor exactly said, well, maybe this was only a licensed work. Maybe the agreement was only for the license for the four years or something. On the other hand, if the Orca did a code review and had the access to the source code, which I don't really think is the case, they would bloody most probably know that the routine that brings the goggle after the dates 
is there. On top of that, you do not really plan your ransomware four years in advance to be happening exactly at the spring weekend, so bring more havoc. No, 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 no. This is not how it goes. That's just too much of the time period between event A and event B. And one more time, I'm not saying that the guy is innocent. I'm only saying that most probably there is something more to that than the orca is stating in their public announcement. This is a shitty situation for the orca, because then the myth of the great quality and the premium quality of the orca goggles got well kinda shattered, and even assuming that everything happened exactly like the orca says, it's still kinda their fault, because nobody checked the code, nobody ran the code review, and they had no bloody idea on exactly what was running on their goggles. And if they have no idea what's running on their hardware, or even worse, they do not have access to the source code, then the version of the guy with the license actually starts kinda making sense. If this is a contractor's fault, and this indeed was a ransomware, and his agreement with the Orca does not say anything about licensing the bootloader for the next four or five years, then this is his fault. But if Orca doesn't have this kind of the agreement, then we have a very, very, very interesting case. It's Pavel the Editor from the future. And you know what? I'm more and more inclined to think that the contractor actually is innocent and everything was caused by the Orca themselves. Why do I think so? Pretty simple. If you look for the images of what the bricked goggles are displaying, you will notice that they are displaying the name of the contractor. You do not run a ransomware attack by displaying the name of your company that allows to pinpoint you. This is not how it works. Then the Swark, which is the name of the contractor, openly says that this is just the expired license. They never delivered a source code, they only delivered an encrypted bootloader that just expired after a few years. Does it mean that the Orca just forgot they are using a license piece of the software that is running on their goggles? Please do remember that some time ago Orca merged with the immersion on RC. And like with every merger, some new people came to the company, some people left the company, and some were just fired. Is it possible that people who knew that the critical part of their system is a licensed work and will expire are no longer working on Orca? Absolutely possible. I can 100% believe that this is just the case. Simple and stupid like that. Some people knew, some people had no idea, some people left, and maybe just the people who stayed at the company had no idea that this is the case. And the final thought is that if you read the Orca public statement, you will notice that, well, they are not really apologizing for the whole situation. Even if this was a malicious attack, even if this was a ransomware, and even if the contractor had no right to expire the bootloader, well, the we are sorry would be kinda in place, right? There's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, this is FPV University, I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching, and like always, happy flying!